I don't expect you to be perfect. I want you to be my husband. Amidst the golden era of Hollywood, Angie Dickinson emerged as a cinematic gem, effortlessly merging grace with talent. Her journey, beginning in the heartland of North Dakota and culminating on the star-studded pavements of Hollywood, has been as multifaceted as her roles. Yet, in the twilight of her years, Dickinson unveiled a heartfelt confession, offering a candid glimpse into her personal world. This video delves into that revelation, presenting an intimate portrait of the legendary actress and her declaration about the true love of her life. The Rise of Angie Dickinson Angie Dickinson's story, much like a classic Hollywood screenplay, pivots from the serene landscapes of North Dakota to the bustling boulevards of Hollywood. Born as Angeline Brown in 1931 in the quiet town of Culm, Angie's narrative is a testament to her enduring spirit, dedication, and an insatiable thirst for excellence. The Browns were a tight-knit family with deep German roots, mirroring the warmth and culture of the Midwestern lifestyle. Angie was the second of four daughters born to Leo Henry Brown and Frederica Hare. With the prairie winds as her backdrop, Angie's childhood was anchored in tradition, values, and a certain rugged simplicity that North Dakota offered. Her family's deep Catholic beliefs played a significant role in molding her character, ensuring that integrity and hard work were virtues she carried throughout her life. As Angie grew, it became evident that she was not just another face in the crowd. Her academic journey, punctuated by her attendance at Bellarmine Jefferson High School in Burbank, California, saw her outshine her peers. Not one to confine herself to a singular achievement, she furthered her accolades by winning the sixth annual Bill of Rights video contest at the tender age of 15. It was an early testament to her intellect, grit, and a harbinger of the many accolades that would grace her life. Interestingly, while the shimmering allure of Hollywood might seem like a natural pull for someone of Angie's charisma and beauty, her initial aspirations veered towards the literary world. With a dream of becoming a writer, Angie's trajectory took an unexpected turn when in 1953, she clinched the title in a beauty contest. This pivotal moment acted as a bridge between her academic pursuits and the enchanting world of glamour. To hone her skills and further her education, Angie found herself amidst the hallowed corridors of Immaculate Heart College and Glendale Community College. Simultaneously, she worked diligently as a secretary at Lockheed Air Terminal and even took up a job at a parts factory. It was a balancing act, one that required her to juggle her dreams, education, and the need to be financially stable. However, destiny, as they say, often has its designs. In 1954, the silver screens of Hollywood beckoned, and Angie found herself cast in a Warner Brothers movie. This was just the beginning. The 1950s, a decade often touted as the golden era of television, saw her become a recurring figure on anthology TV series. It was clear that Angie had not just arrived, but she was here to stay. Her breakthrough role came in 1956 with Gun the Man Down. The film was more than just another movie. It was Angie's ticket to the upper echelons of Hollywood. This was solidified when she won a Golden Globe Award for New Star of the Year for her outstanding performance in 1959's Rio Bravo, where she shared the screen with luminaries like John Wayne and Dean Martin. The 1960s further entrenched her position as one of Hollywood's premier leading ladies. With a string of successes like Ocean's Eleven, The Sins of Rachel Cade, The Killers, The Art of Love, The Chase, and Point Blank, Angie Dickinson was not just a star, she was an institution. Beyond the cinematic world, her talents flourished on the television front as well. She personified the character of Sergeant Pepper Anderson in the NBC crime series Policewoman. The role not only showcased her range as an actress, but also earned her a Golden Globe Award for Best Actress Television Series Drama and a trio of Emmy nominations. From the plains of North Dakota to the heart of Hollywood, Angie Dickinson's rise was not just about stardom. It was a narrative of resilience, determination, and an unyielding pursuit of one's passion. With each passing role, with each accolade, Angie stamped her indelible mark on Hollywood, ensuring her legacy as one of the most talented and enduring stars of her time, Angie's silver screen glory. In the annals of Hollywood's storied past, few stars have managed to shine as brightly and consistently as Angie Dickinson. As an actress, she embodied a spectrum of roles, 
moving effortlessly from westerns to thrillers, carving out a niche for herself in the heart of the film industry. One can't delve into Angie's cinematic voyage without mentioning her role in Rio Bravo. This 1959 classic, helmed by the esteemed Howard Hawks, featured Dickinson alongside the titanic John Wayne and the charismatic Dean Martin. In her portrayal of Feathers, Angie stood her ground, holding her own against the industry's heavyweights. This wasn't just a supporting role, it was a statement, one that showcased her prowess as an actress. The chemistry she shared on screen with Wayne was palpable, adding a touch of romance to the otherwise action-packed Western. However, Angie's ability to captivate audiences wasn't limited to the Wild West. In Brian De Palma's 1980 neo-noir thriller Dressed to Kill, she played the role of Kate Miller, a woman caught in a web of intrigue and danger. It was a bold move for the actress, venturing into mature, edgier territory. But Angie, ever the versatile artist, transitioned seamlessly into the role, embodying the complexities and vulnerabilities of her character. The film was not just a box office success, but also underscored Angie's range and ability to adapt to evolving cinematic landscapes. Throughout her tenure in Hollywood, Angie graced numerous films that spanned various genres. Whether it was the gritty heist film Ocean's Eleven, the poignant drama of The Sins of Rachel Cade, or the raw intensity of Point Blank, Angie displayed a chameleon-like adaptability. Every role she undertook showcased a different facet of her talent, each more mesmerizing than the last. But Angie Dickinson's influence wasn't limited to the silver screen. With the dawn of television's golden age, Angie took to the medium like a natural. Among her many TV ventures, Police Woman stands out as a testament to her impact on popular culture. As Sergeant Suzanne Pepper Anderson, Angie broke barriers, portraying a strong, independent woman in a predominantly male-dominated profession. Police Woman wasn't just a show, it was a movement. It illuminated the challenges and triumphs of women in the workforce, and more specifically, in law enforcement. Angie's portrayal was both authentic and aspirational, making Sergeant Pepper Anderson an iconic character in television history. The accolades that Angie amassed over her illustrious career spoke volumes of her contribution to film and television. Winning a Golden Globe for New Star of the Year after her performance in Rio Bravo was only the beginning. Her role in Police Woman fetched her a Golden Globe Award for Best Actress Television Series Drama and also saw her being nominated for three Emmys, such recognition from the industry was a testament to her talent and dedication. However, Angie's influence went beyond awards and accolades. She was a trailblazer, pushing boundaries and challenging norms. In an era where women were often relegated to secondary roles, Angie emerged as a powerhouse, demanding and commanding attention. She redefined what it meant to be a leading lady, merging grace with grit, beauty with brains. Furthermore, her legacy in Hollywood is intrinsically tied to her ability to redefine and reinterpret roles traditionally played by men. In doing so, she paved the way for future generations of actresses, proving that with talent and tenacity, one could shatter glass ceilings. In the grand tapestry of Hollywood cinematic history, Angie Dickinson's contributions stand out, not just for their brilliance, but also for their significance. Through her roles, awards, and undying commitment to her craft, she showcased the power of storytelling, the magic of cinema, and the endless possibilities that lay therein. Whether it was the dust-laden streets of Rio Bravo or the urban maze of Dress to Kill, Angie Dickinson's presence was both luminous and lasting, echoing through the annals of Hollywood's silver screen glory. Angie's love life, the known and the unknown. The dazzling lights of Hollywood have always had the uncanny ability to cast both illuminating spotlights and enigmatic shadows on the lives of its denizens. Such was the narrative of Angie Dickinson's personal life, a blend of the well-documented and the subtly hinted. Angie's first walk down the aisle was with Gene Dickinson, a former football player. Though details of their relationship remain limited in public discourse, their union marked the beginning of Angie's foray into love and matrimony. The couple shared moments, memories, and a surname that would become iconic in the annals of Hollywood history. However, as with many relationships in Tinseltown, their marriage was short-lived, ending in divorce. It was during these early days of stardom that Angie's life took a twist worthy of a Hollywood screenplay. 
She met and fell for one of the most magnetic personalities of the time, Frank Sinatra. Frank, with his velvety voice and undeniable charisma, was a force to be reckoned with, both on and off the stage. Their affair was passionate and intensely publicized, as were most of Sinatra's romances. Tales of their rendezvous, the electric chemistry they shared, and their whirlwind love story filled tabloids and became the stuff of legend. While their relationship eventually fizzled out, Angie and Frank remained lifelong friends, sharing an undeniable bond till the end. Yet it was her union with the musical maestro Burt Bacharach that would become one of the most talked-about relationships of her life. Bacharach, known for his soul-stirring melodies and chart-topping hits, was as much a titan in the world of music as Angie was in film. Their love story was both enchanting and tumultuous. Marrying in 1965, the couple welcomed a daughter, Nikki, in 1966. Nikki's life was a poignant chapter in Angie's journey, as she battled with a developmental disorder. Their shared challenges and triumphs deepened Angie and Bert's bond, painting a picture of love that was far from the glamorized tales of Hollywood, but was real, raw, and resilient. However, the strains and stresses of their individual careers, coupled with the challenges they faced as parents, took a toll. The couple eventually parted ways in 1981, though they remained intertwined through their love for their daughter. In addition to these well-documented relationships, Angie's life was rife with rumors of other romantic liaisons, as is the norm with any Hollywood starlet of her stature. Whether these whispers held any water or were mere creations of the ever-speculative media is a matter of conjecture. Some say she had a brief romance with President John F. Kennedy, a claim she neither confirmed nor denied vehemently, allowing the story to weave its own narrative. It's worth noting, though, that amidst the speculated affairs and confirmed romances, Angie's personal life was much more than a series of relationships. It was a testament to her strength, her ability to love deeply, and her resilience in the face of heartbreak. It was evident in the way she spoke about her past loves, the tenderness with which she remembered them, and the grace with which she moved on. While her on-screen performances have been analyzed, applauded, and archived, Angie's off-screen life, particularly her romances, remain a blend of the clear and the cryptic. The known tales of passion, the whispered rumors of fleeting romances, and the enduring bonds of true love converge to create a narrative that is as captivating as any role she ever played. In the end, Angie Dickinson's love life is a reminder of the timeless adage, life, particularly in the kaleidoscope of Hollywood, is often stranger, more enchanting, and more intricate than fiction. And in Angie's case, it was a tale told with equal parts passion, mystery, and undeniable elegance. Sinatra, more than just a crooner, Frank Sinatra, with his velvety voice and hypnotic blue eyes, has been immortalized as one of the greatest musicians the world has ever seen. However, the allure of Sinatra extended far beyond his musical prowess. His relationships, especially with women in Hollywood, became the stuff of legends, entwining his personal life with his celebrity in a manner that few stars have experienced. Sinatra's charm was multifaceted. Yes, his voice could make the hardest of hearts melt, and those eyes of his could seemingly look into one's very soul. But what made him particularly captivating was the enigmatic persona he carried. He was vulnerable yet commanding, sensitive yet assertive, and passionate in everything he did, be it singing, acting, or romancing. Beyond the physical allure, Sinatra possessed an intense charisma. He was unpredictable. His spontaneity made every moment with him feel like an adventure. Stories of his impromptu trips, midnight drives, and surprise serenades became legendary, painting a picture of a man who lived in the moment, making those around him feel incredibly special. Furthermore, Sinatra was known to be deeply loyal to those he cared about. His friendships in Hollywood were legendary, and his loyalty extended to his romantic interests as well. He was known to go to great lengths to ensure the well-being of those he loved, often stepping in to offer support, both emotional and financial, during their times of need. This protective nature added another layer to his appeal. In the realm of Hollywood, where relationships can often be fleeting and superficial, Sinatra's intensity stood out. Women were drawn to his unwavering attention. When Sinatra was in love, he loved deeply, 
passionately and all-encompassingly. Many women have recounted how, when they were with him, he made them feel like they were the only person in the room, if not the world. However, Sinatra's allure was not devoid of its complexities. His relationships were often tumultuous, filled with highs and lows that mirrored the passion with which he approached life. This unpredictability, combined with his magnetic charm, created an addictive dynamic that many found hard to resist. While his connections with the women of Hollywood were numerous, each relationship seemed to reveal a different facet of Sinatra. With Ava Gardner, it was a passionate, tempestuous love that showcased his vulnerability and intensity. With Mia Farrow, despite the age difference, Sinatra found a kindred spirit, someone as free-spirited and unconventional as himself. And with Angie Dickinson, the friendship that remained after their romance was a testament to his ability to form deep, lasting bonds. Ultimately, trying to pinpoint the exact reasons for Sinatra's appeal to the women of Hollywood is akin to trying to capture lightning in a bottle. It's elusive, multifaceted, and deeply personal. What cannot be denied, however, is that Sinatra left an indelible mark, not just on the world of music, but on the hearts of many who had the privilege or perhaps the peril of getting close to him. In the annals of Hollywood's rich history, Sinatra will always be remembered as much for his crooning as for his charisma. His relationships, with all their complexities, joys, and heartbreaks, are as much a part of his legacy as his songs. And in that legacy, he stands as a testament to the fact that allure, true allure, is an intricate tapestry woven of talent, personality, passion, and mystery. Angie and Sinatra, a deep dive. Frank Sinatra and Angie Dickinson's relationship is one of the many storied chapters in Hollywood's rich tapestry of romances. While both were stars in their own right, their combined allure made them a force to reckon with. The magnetism between the two was palpable, a mixture of deep affection, respect, and undeniable chemistry. Yet, amidst all the glitz and glam, their relationship was grounded in authentic feelings and mutual admiration. Why they never tied the knot is a question that has intrigued fans and biographers alike. On the surface, their bond was one of the strongest in Hollywood. Angie, in her many interviews, always spoke about Sinatra with a twinkle in her eye, recounting the magic of their time together. She described him as one of the most passionate lovers she ever had, an individual whose very presence was electrifying. Yet, marriage wasn't in the cards for them. Some speculate that Sinatra's unpredictable nature, combined with his tumultuous history of marriages, might have made Angie wary. While she deeply admired and cared for him, Dickinson was an independent spirit. She sought a relationship that was both passionate and steady. Sinatra, with all his charm, was often a storm of emotions, breathtakingly beautiful but challenging to weather at times. It's worth noting that Angie held a profound admiration for Sinatra's ex-wife, Nancy. Nancy Sinatra Sr. wasn't just the first Mrs. Sinatra, she was a testament to the complexities of loving a man as multifaceted as Frank. Angie saw in Nancy a woman of grace, strength, and resilience, someone who had navigated the roller coaster of being Sinatra's spouse with unparalleled elegance. This admiration was perhaps an indication of Angie's acknowledgement of the challenges that came with being Sinatra's romantic partner. The very qualities that made him irresistibly appealing were the ones that made a committed relationship with him a challenge. Frank's own sentiments about Angie have been scattered across books, interviews, and songs. His feelings for her were deep and genuine. He once said that Angie had an electricity about her, an energy that was both invigorating and soothing. In more private moments, as recounted by close friends and confidants, Sinatra would speak of Angie with warmth and fondness, often alluding to their shared moments as some of the happiest in his life. The tale of Angie and Sinatra is not just a love story. It's a narrative about two individuals, both fiercely independent and incredibly talented, who found in each other a kindred spirit. Their relationship was not defined by commitment papers or wedding rings, but by moments, stolen glances, shared laughs, whispered confessions, and lingering embraces. In a world where the glare of the spotlight often reveals more than it hides, the relationship between Angie Dickinson and Frank Sinatra remains, in many ways, enigmatic. It's a testament to the fact that love, in its purest form, often defies definition and transcends convention. 
It's about two souls connecting, even if the world around them keeps changing. Frank's not-so-little secret. Frank Sinatra, with his sultry voice and piercing blue eyes, was more than just a crooner. He was an enigma. With every note he sang and every role he played, he oozed a confidence and magnetism that left audiences, especially women, completely entranced. While his vocal prowess and acting chops were undeniable, it was his personality, his charisma, and the mystique surrounding him that turned him into a legend. Among the whispered rumors and shared stories, there was one particular facet of the Sinatra lore that had both amused and intrigued the public. The speculation surrounding his anatomy. Sinatra's physical endowments became an underground topic of discussion, leading to giggles and winks in the close-knit circles of Hollywood. Gossip columnists and party-goers alike would occasionally broach the subject, not always with the utmost tact. There was a certain irony in this. Frank, a man who valued privacy and often went to great lengths to guard his personal life, was at the epicenter of one of Hollywood's most intimate speculations. While most of these rumors were shared in hushed tones, they were, in part, fueled by the stories from those close to him. Ava Gardner, Sinatra's ex-wife and a famed actress in her own right, was known to make cheeky comments that further fanned the flames of these speculations. Their tumultuous marriage was the stuff of tabloid dreams, punctuated with passionate highs and dramatic lows. But despite the challenges they faced as a couple, Gardner's fondness for Sinatra was evident. Her playful remarks were less about disparaging him and more about shedding light on the charismatic figure that was Frank Sinatra. But what was it about Sinatra that drew people in? Was it just his physical allure, or was there more at play? Friends, family, and colleagues who spent time with him highlighted a multitude of reasons. His ex-lovers in their recounting often painted a picture of a man who was both passionate and sensitive. Mia Farrow, another of Sinatra's ex-wives, described him as a man with a tender heart. She spoke of their shared moments, highlighting his emotional depth and the intensity of his feelings. Sinatra's relationships, as described by those who knew him intimately, were characterized by a mix of ardor and tenderness. Yet it's essential to understand that the man was not without his flaws. Sinatra's emotional intensity often manifested as bouts of jealousy and occasional fits of rage. His relationships, as passionate as they were, often bore the brunt of his tempestuous nature. In analyzing the allure of Frank Sinatra, it's clear that it was a combination of factors— his physical attributes, while often discussed in hushed tones, were just a facet of the Sinatra enigma. His charisma, his emotional depth, and his undeniable talent made him a force to reckon with. Sinatra was a complex figure, a blend of strengths and weaknesses, and it's this complexity that made him irresistibly captivating. The Sinatra Chronicles, a brief overview of Sinatra and me. Tony Opetisano's Sinatra and Me stands as a testament to the deep, abiding bond shared between Frank Sinatra and his confidant. Having spent years by Sinatra's side, Opetisano offered a uniquely intimate view of the legendary crooner. Among the myriad revelations, the insights into Sinatra's relationship with Angie Dickinson and other facets of his life were particularly compelling. From the outset, Opetisano painted a picture of Sinatra that deviated from the widely accepted public persona. Rather than the untouchable icon, Sinatra emerged as a man of depth, beset with vulnerabilities, passions, and an unyielding loyalty to those he loved. This tender portrayal immediately set the stage for the detailed exploration of his relationships. Angie Dickinson's role in Sinatra's life was illuminated with a care and consideration— that only someone close to the singer could provide. Opetisano underscored their undeniable chemistry and deep mutual respect. He delved into their shared moments, often characterized by laughter, profound conversations, and a mutual appreciation for the arts. Their bond, as detailed by Opetisano, was rooted not just in romance, but also in a shared understanding of the pressures and whims of the entertainment industry. Beyond Angie, the book provided numerous insights into Sinatra's personal and professional life. Opetisano touched upon Sinatra's famed Rat Pack days, detailing the camaraderie and occasional clashes that came with such a dynamic group of entertainers. Stories of late-night performances, impromptu gatherings, and the challenges of staying relevant in a rapidly changing entertainment landscape painted a vivid picture of Sinatra's professional journey. 
One of the more intriguing revelations was Sinatra's relationship with the Mafia. Operisano debunked several myths, emphasizing that while Sinatra maintained connections with individuals linked to the mob, he wasn't deeply embroiled in their operations. Instead, these relationships were a byproduct of Sinatra's upbringing, his environment, and a testament to his ability to build bridges across different worlds. Sinatra and Me was not just a chronicle of Frank Sinatra's life, but a heartfelt tribute from a close friend. Through the pages, Opedisano celebrated Sinatra's successes, provided context to his challenges, and most importantly, highlighted the humanity of a man often viewed as a demigod. The revelations about Sinatra's relationship with Angie Dickinson, his professional journey, and the intricate tapestry of his personal life converged to offer viewers an unprecedented and deeply touching portrayal of the legendary Frank Sinatra.